I was born in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. I went to Valley High School in the WPIAL, which I believe is the toughest wrestling region in the United States. And um, my father ran a scrapyard for 50 years. My mom was his loyal uh, administrative assistant, CFO, secretary, and my parents had an enormous influence on my career. Um, I learned more from my father, who had an eighth grade education, than any class I ever took. I was very athletic, I was very active, and I wanted to um, excel in a sport. The problem is that you know, I couldn't hit or throw or catch, but it turned out that wrestling was perfect for me. A club formed in downtown Pittsburgh called the, Gold, uh, the Making of a Champion at the Golden Triangle YMCA. And it was actually Bobby Douglas uh, ran this club. And I was, um, my mother would drive me after high school practice to downtown Pittsburgh, which is 40 minutes, uh, and I would go to Bobby Douglas's club practice. Over a period of years, my wrestling camps, my books, and my films have had an impact on many wrestlers. Joe Galley happens to be one of those wrestlers. I'm honored that I was helpful to Joe. I first met Joe as a wrestling opponent, and then I sought out where he was working out, and I wanted to train with Joe. And that's where I really got to, to know Joe. Uh, I got to see how tenacious he was, self-motivated, how driven he was. He's a very decisive guy and very optimistic, just full of energy. I was on the 1976 Dapper Dan team. And this was really key because I wrestled a three-time um, Ohio State champ uh, who was unbeaten in Ohio. And he was, um, he was a tremendous wrestler. And um, I believe Bill Lamb was at the Dapper Dan uh, recruiting the kid I was wrestling. And um, I ended up pinning him in the second period. I looked at Joe wrestling 98 pounds, and he was very competitive and won the deal. I thought, you know what, I'll always have a 118 pounder. And that shows you what a poor coach I was because uh, Joe never made 118. The first year is at 126, and by the time he's a junior and senior, he had to cut 20 pounds to make 145. My senior year, everything came together. I trained like a maniac all summer. Uh, I um, made a decision that I was going to go out strong, and um, I was um, an underdog at the 142 weight class in ACC. Uh, we were getting ready for the tournament, and of course, I had two guys that I was counting on. C.D. Mock was an uh, All-American returning, and Carter Mario, who actually is the only person that beat uh, Mark Schultz in the NCAA competition. They were my two big point getters, and I didn't want to chew them. I wanted to keep their attitude great. So I was pretty hard on Joe. I'd say, damn it, Joe. Damn it, Galli. Damn it, Joe. You know, and uh, he said, Coach, by the end of the week, he said, I thought, thought my first name was Dammit. I got knocked out of the uh, championship around my senior year, as did somebody else who was hurt. So we really needed somebody to step up. And it was Joe's match. And I said, Joe, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but if you don't win, we're not going to win this tournament. And if you don't pin him, uh, we're still not going to win. We'll just tie. We beat NC State by a half a point that year, and it was largely because, I think it, only because Joe pinned his guy in the finals. And this was a guy that was touted as the, uh, the next um, Leroy Smith. He came walking off the tournament, off the mat, and this is just right after I'd been yelling at him all week. He looked at me, he said, Coach, that one was for you. And it hit my heart and made me drop and I thought you know here's a kid who got it won we won by a half a point because he won by a fall and we wouldn't have won it and I'd been yelling at him all week so that showed who he really was he is a giver he's given back to the sport he's been extremely successful my way up so I majored in business at UNC um, and then I, I pursued my MBA at Loyola while I was working uh, at Black & Decker the principles that you live through the sport and that you learn through that sport, you have to apply them in your life. And Joe's done that in the business world probably better than anybody that I know. He's gone and taken the principles of hard work, perseverance, self-discipline, and carried it on into when you get knocked down, get back up, and carried it into the professional field. At Black & Decker, I, I was there for 19 years. I was promoted 20 times in 19 years. My last six years, I was uh, president of the company. I decided to uh, take a very different uh, path and I um, accepted a position as Chief Operating Officer and President of Amazon.com working for Jeff Bezos. Um, I was only at Amazon 13 months, but it was um, a priceless, amazing, exhilarating, uh, grueling, um, enlightening experience for me. And it, it gave me a perspective I would have never had had I not 
uh, made the plunge and gone into this um, uh, new, new economy, new world. I ended up uh, assuming the position as CEO of, of a company called New Rubbermaid. I stayed there four years in, in change and um, ended up leaving uh, New Rubbermaid in 2005. Um, I took one year and then I uh, decided to accept a position um, with TTI. Of course, I've been at TTI now for nine years. And it, TTI has been my most, um, um, most exciting, most fulfilling professional experience. I've had so much fun uh, uh, running this company, building this company, um, uh, terrorizing our competitors. So anyhow, it's worked out great. It's not the way I would have drawn it up um, in 1980. I never thought I would leave Black & Decker. I never thought I would leave any company. But um, in business, as in life, things happen. From what he learned on the mat, which is it's not your losses, it's how you deal with them, and how he picked himself up time and time and time again. Uh, in the face of adversity and just kept his focus on the goal. And the goal was just to, to move ahead, to learn, and to kick some serious ass in the business world. And that's exactly what he's done. R wrestling prepared me in so many ways, and that's why I'm incredibly grateful that I, that I pursued wrestling. And that's why, of course, my, 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 both my boys wrestle. Uh, I basically mandated that my boys are going to wrestle. And, you know, it turned out that my oldest son, Peter, um, started slow and ended up getting really good. And he has, he's uh, wrestling at, at Stanford now on a scholarship. For Alexander, my 12-year-old, he's, uh, he's about to go through the journey. We'll see how he does, but I'm, I'm optimistic because he's the hardest working kid I've ever seen. My kids are growing up in a very different setting than I grew up in a 2,000 square foot house when my father ran a scrapyard. Um, so um, I worry a lot about kids growing up in an environment where they don't have the grit and the work ethic and, the, and they become spoiled and entitled. And they think about trust fund as opposed to um, um, that extra weightlifting session um, at 10 at night. So wrestling for me keeps the kids grounded. Wrestling forces the kids to mix with a wide range of uh, society. It's a tremendous honor to be part of this Hall of Fame and to be inducted uh, as an outstanding American. For me, if I can influence young wrestlers and get them to see that there's more to this than just winning the matches, if, that can, if I can get to them and get them to see that you know, making A's is important too, and thinking through their career beyond wrestling is also important. To me, I hope that this will serve as, um, as a catalyst for, for the legions of wrestlers um, that won't win the Olympics, uh, but can achieve an awful lot and uh, based on their wrestling background.